Anytime an archaeologist takes a trip out into a field, they might find an incredible ancient artifact. That being said, every time a team of construction workers starts digging out the foundations of a new building, they might find an incredible ancient artifact too. We never know when or where they might turn up, but we love bringing the stories of their discoveries to you in videos like this one. We start in the Turkish town of Haran, where this medieval medicine bottle was discovered in February 2019. If you're wondering how the archaeologists responsible for the discovery worked out that the earthenware artifact is a medicine bottle, the answer is that there's still medicine inside it. Experts believe the bottle to be around 900 years old. It's extensively decorated on all sides, including an image of a pair of entwined snakes. That's a medical symbol which is still in use all over the world today. Turkish historians say that the bottle was likely made during the time of the Zengids, who ruled the Levant and Upper Mesopotamia in the 12th century before being replaced by the Ayyubids. It's impossible to specifically identify the medicine inside the bottle, but the discovery of the artifact makes historians increasingly certain that Haran was an important medical center all those centuries ago. Far more medicine-related artifacts are discovered here than tend to be discovered within the limits of the average ancient Turkish settlement. The area is now on the UNESCO Temporary Heritage List and may eventually be promoted to full World Heritage status. We're staying in Turkey, but we're going to move on to looking at something far older. This ancient seal is believed to be a whole 9,000 years old and was found inside a burial mound in Mersin, which is a city on Turkey's south coast in 2018. The mound is called Yamuk Tepe Mound and was already well known to archaeologists at the time of the discovery. Seals of this type are thought to have been a way of denoting private property. The geometric patterns on it may have had a symbolic meaning, but it's also possible that they're just a form of decoration. It was found during an excavation project that lasted two and a half months and also turned up an obsidian arrowhead and a collection of sling stones. That may indicate that the person buried within the mound was a warrior or a soldier. Seal discoveries of this age have been made before, but they're extremely rare, and finding one in such good condition is an even rarer event. Sadly, we don't know much about the culture that created it, not even their name. We now move to China for a discovery that took place in January 2022. If you've been watching this channel for a while, or even if you just have a keen interest in archaeology, you've probably seen battle armor made from almost every material imaginable, from teeth to coconut shells. However, you probably haven't seen armor like this before. It's been labeled fish scale armor, and it's approximately 2,500 years old. The name is a little misleading, as the armor found inside the tomb in Torfan on the edges of the Taklamakan Desert isn't actually made of fish scales. Instead, it's made of more than 5,000 overlapping scales of leather, arranged in a pattern to make them look like fish scales. Experts think that it was imported from the Middle East, and so might represent a rare form of technological exchange between the two territories at that point in history. Armor like this would have been useful because it offers better protection from blunt force attacks than male armor and is also cheaper to make, but it lacks flexibility and coverage. Archaeologists have been digging through a site in Forstenfeldbruck, Bavaria, Germany since 2021. One of the most fascinating things they've found there so far is a well. It's not any old well, either. It's a 3,000-year-old wishing well. The well is 17 feet deep and lined with wood. Right at the bottom of it, perfectly preserved, is a collection of ritual deposits that date back to the Bronze Age. The deposits, as the name suggests, were placed into the well on purpose. The goods include 70 decorated cups, bowls, and pots of a kind usually associated with grave goods. Each was individually wrapped and gently lowered into the well with great care, meaning that many of them were fully intact. Other goods recovered from the bottom of the wishing well included metal spirals, animal tooth pendants, and bronze clothespins. Most of the finds, though, are coins. Historians aren't sure whether the coins were thrown into the well for good luck, 
or because the people of the era understood, on some level, that copper and silver had biocidal properties and made well water safer to drink. The town of Bamburg in Northumberland, England, is best known for its ancient castle. Compared to this next discovery, though, the castle might as well have been built yesterday. It's a wooden paddle, and it's around 6,500 years old. The paddle was discovered in 2013, buried beneath terrain that's usually wet pasture, but it dried out due to that year's unusually dry summer. Next to the paddle, the team found the remains of a platform made from brushwood and a mound surrounded by stones that had clearly been heated by fire. Ten years have passed since this discovery, and experts still aren't sure what to make of it. The paddle clearly wasn't used to help steer a boat, so what was it used for? The heated stone suggests this site was used for cooking, so did the paddle help with that process somehow? Could the activity have been brewing or tanning rather than cooking? Some scholars have suggested that the paddle was used to move hot rocks off the burning mound, but that doesn't get us any closer to knowing why the mound was set on fire in the first place. We're heading back to Turkey now, where an ancient and primitive musical instrument was found during excavation work in Bakalivler Anatolia in July 2021. It's thought to be the oldest musical instrument ever found in the country, with an age of around 8,500 years. The discovery came after a local resident tipped off the nearby Bilicic Archaeology Museum about some ceramic pieces that they'd recently found in a field, which prompted a full-scale dig. Professional archaeologists quickly found 11 sets of 9,000-year-old human remains, along with seeds for buckwheat, barley, and lentils, suggesting that these ancient people were accomplished agriculturalists. This bone artifact is believed to be either a whistle or a flute. It has one carefully drilled hole on one side and two more on the other. The presence of holes suggests it has more in common with a modern flute than a whistle. Similar but not identical instruments have been found elsewhere in Turkey before and are known as tutex. The instrument is too delicate to be played, but experts plan to create an exact copy of it so they can recreate its sound. Leonardo da Vinci had one of the greatest minds of any human being who ever lived. He was a polymath, perhaps the most gifted multidisciplinarian in history, and came up with new concepts and new ideas throughout his life. Some of the most striking of them can be found in the Codex Atlanticus. This 12-volume set of manuscripts is full of drawings and writings from the mind of the master and is the largest individual collection of his work. Da Vinci considered all manner of things on the pages of this codex, from musical instruments to flying weaponry. There's even a workable design for a parachute contained within the codex. It's thought that Da Vinci worked on the first of the designs in the codex in 1478 and the last in 1519. Also included are a few basic sketches of ideas he had for paintings, complex mathematics, astronomical observations, meditations on philosophy, and a design for a mechanical hydraulic pump. Some of the designs are outlandish, a giant crossbow, for example, but all of them were plausible, and in many cases, hundreds of years ahead of their time. The Bayo Tapestry is an incredible piece of Middle Age art and tells the story of the Battle of Hastings, which took place in England in 1066. It was the last time that England was ever successfully invaded by an enemy nation. It's considered to be a cultural icon in both England and France, but which side does the design truly belong to, and who made it? Nobody knows for sure, but there are a few clues. One school of thought says that the tapestry is of French design and might have been commissioned for the dedication of Bayou Cathedral in 1077. Another says that it was made by embroiderers in England somewhere between 1067 and 1092. The first solid record of its existence, though, doesn't appear until it's recorded in the inventory of Bayou Cathedral in Normandy, France in 1476. That might point to it being French, but the content of the tapestry includes the stories of three English kings, Edward the Confessor, King Harold, and King William. Had it been made by the French, it would surely have focused more on the French side of the battle than the English side. On the other hand, though, 
its proportions are a perfect fit for the nave of Bayou Cathedral, which suggests it was specifically made to fit there. It's probably French, but we can't be certain. We're going back to Turkey yet again, but this time it's to talk about the ancient Romans. The Romans were known to be big fans of board games. They might even have invented the game that went on to become chess. You might have heard of the Roman game Ludus Latrincolorum before, but in November 2024, a different variation from it was discovered in the ancient Turkish city of Kibira. It's called Ludus Dodecim Scriptorium. All that's left of the old game set after 1,800 years in the ground are two game pieces and a square stone board. Its name translates into English roughly as the game of 12 written lines, although where written lines come into it is unknown. In form and function, it's likely to have been similar to backgammon, and evolved from an even older Roman board game called Senate. Playing it with a friend would have been considered a fine way of passing the time in the city's agoras. It might even still be fun to play, if anybody knew the rules, but sadly they've been lost to time. We know that it once involved 15 pieces and was played with three dice, but how the dice drove the movement of the pieces is a mystery. Switching to the topic of the Mayans, the severed head of a Maya maze god was found in Palenque in May 2022. The discovery was made by archaeologists from the Instituto Nacional de Antropologia y Historia, who were working at a site close to the Usumacinta River in Chiapas. Palenque is already known among historians and archaeologists for having some of the finest ancient architecture and bas-relief carvings from the Mayan period ever discovered. The severed head is made of stucco, and had been deliberately deposited in a small pond. Experts on Mayan culture and beliefs think that the pond was intended to replicate the entrance to the Mayan underworld. One of the culture's fundamental beliefs was that the universe was divided into three regions – the sky, the earth, and the underworld – and travel between the three was possible via portals. While this sculpture has been designed to look like a head that's been forcibly severed from a body, it's unlikely that there was ever a full-sized statue that it was cut from. Instead, it was likely conceived and built as a severed head, and then mounted on a tripod before being positioned in an east-west position in the hope of stimulating maize growth. A woman known only as Taputi is thought to have been the first female chemist in Mesopotamia, and might have been the world's first female perfume manufacturer. She was a clever and literate woman, and left some of the formulas for her perfumes behind on a series of 3,200-year-old clay tablets, accompanied by instructions. The partially translated tablets, which also bear Taputi's name inscribed in cuneiform, were found during excavations in Assur, Iraq, which was once part of Babylonian Mesopotamia. In July 2022, experts recreated Taputi's perfume by following her formula. The language has never been fully translated, but scholars understand enough of it to translate the essential parts of the text. We know, for example, that Taputi used myrrh, horseradish, balsam, calamus, cypress, flowers, and spices to make her fragrances, which she mixed with solvents and then distilled and filtered to create the finished product. Taputi's instructions also suggested working only at night under a full moon and seeking communion with the stars in the sky, but the modern-day experts passed on that recommendation. Unfortunately, nobody involved in the experiments has seen fit to tell us what the perfume smells like. Perhaps it was awful. Archaeologists in Datong, which is in Shangqi province in China, recently discovered a cluster of undisturbed ancient tombs. They've been going through the tombs one at a time, but it's what they found in Tomb 113 that's caused the most excitement among the country's experts. The tomb was found to contain dozens of burial goods, including a unique set of terracotta dancers, musicians, and other carefully posed tiny figurines. Prior to the arrival of the archaeologists, the tomb had been sealed since somewhere around the year 480, placing it in the middle of the Northern Wei dynasty. 
What's so unusual about the burial figurines isn't just how unusual their poses are, but how many of them there are. Behind the figurines we've already mentioned, the team found a further set of earthenware laborers and animals, flanked by pottery horsemen and bullock carts. The quality of the collection suggests that whoever was buried in the tomb was somebody of great importance, but there's a curious lack of inscriptions or other identifying material. We'll regrettably probably never know who he was, but the search continues. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.